Hello everyone, I am the Lore Explorer and this is Outer Wilds. In today's loop, we are going to look at a few of the differences between the full version of Outer Wilds and the alpha version of the game that was released in 2015. But I'm not going to look at it in the conventional, wow, look at how much it's changed and improved. Instead, we will look specifically at the story details that have either been changed or cut entirely. And as always, this video will contain spoilers for Outer Wilds. While playing through the alpha of Outer Wilds, I noticed it tried to answer some of the smaller questions the player may have about the game. Yet at the same time, it still lacked the cohesive structure connecting everything, and there was a lot of stuff that you just couldn't interact with, and large parts of the final game were just completely missing, but there was still a lot of interesting information to find in the alpha. Like the pyramid I showed before, that was actually Nomite text the Harthians used to translate their language, and the dang thing was a Nomite recipe for cactus stew. I mean, it's not story changing, but it does show us the developers thought of things like how the Nomai sustained themselves while they were trapped on these planets. Personally, I wish they left it in the full game. Not only because I'm obviously interested in the Nomai's way of life, but because not adding it to the main game excludes it from the label of actual lore. The developers removed it from the game, so it can no longer be considered relevant to the actual main game. But that doesn't make it any less interesting in my opinion. Not only is some of it just not added, some of the changes to the main game actually directly contradict the alpha. The perfect example of this is the alpha's equivalent of Hornfells. They tell us they've been getting strange reports from all over the solar system. All of the explorers have radioed in to report that their planets are acting strangely. A call from the Hourglass Twins reports abnormal seismic activity under the surface. On Giant's Deep, Storms have been brewing and things are becoming a bit more active there. The explorer on Brittle Hollow is saying the volcanic moon Devil's Lantern has went from dormant to extremely active. It's begun bombarding the planet below with giant rocks made of lava. That's where the difference lays. If we head to the Nomai escape pod on the Alpha's version of Brittle Hollow, it mentions that Devil's Lantern isn't erupting and doesn't serve as an issue for the Nomai. In fact, the Alpha Nomai never had to contend with the bombardment from their moon. Now on the contrary, in the full release of the game, as soon as the Nomai touch down on Brittle Hollow, they are contending with Hollow's Lantern. This actually plays a big role in the Nomai story. Hollow's Lantern and the lava it shoots down at the planet presented a big enough danger to the Nomai that they had to avoid it and it forced them underground to found a city under the protection of the crust. Now, the solar system becoming super active last minute is actually really interesting and sort of makes sense at first glance. It would have explained how Brittle Hollow stayed whole for 280,000 years, yet starts to break up as soon as we get there. But as it is now, the full game just doesn't offer an explanation for that, and we are led to believe that our solar system has always been as insane as it is now. Next up, we are going to talk about a few of the smaller changes. In the Alpha, the Nomite died off over 1.5 million years ago, but in the full release, it was just over 280,000 years. This serves to lessen the distance from us and the Nomite, making them feel more relatable. Another tiny tidbit from the Alpha is the Harthians without a doubt evolved in a pond within this crater. Even now, when they travel through space, it's still their favorite place in the universe. In the full release of the game, we can find Nomai logs in the giant geyser at Timber's Hearth. They claim that this is where the Nomai originated from, at least our tadpole ancestors anyway. Since all of the underwater pathways are connected, they could have made their leap to land anywhere, but my guess is that this piece of information is still true in the full release too. One pretty cool thing about the Alpha is the computer comes with some knowledge about the celestial bodies we've been to. Normally, we have to land on them first, but it has info on the sun right off the bat. It tells us our sun is unstable, and the accelerated nuclear fusion has already begun in its core. We don't really know what's happening in the state of our sun at the beginning of the game until it kind of goes kaboom. So it seems like the Nomai and the Alpha had a bit of foreknowledge that things were going pretty bad already. Another cool tidbit the Alpha computer tells us is about the Hourglass Twins. It tells us the sand exchange here happens between the two planets every 100 years due to unknown geological processes. Aside from the Nomai being dead for 1.8 million years or something, I actually think all of these would be a pretty good addition to the full game. 
But as it sits now, none of that is lore, and we have no idea how often the sand exchange occurs on the Hourglass Twins. The last few are actually pretty big changes. To start, we are going to visit the vastly different Dark Bramble from the Alpha. When we get there, we find some strange feature growing off of Bramble's vines, and it's glowing red. It turns out, when the Nomai came to our solar system, they crashed deep within Dark Bramble. The Escape Pod's computer tells us that after eons passed, it detected that Dark Bramble has been corrupted by the vessel. This corruption has spread pretty far inside Bramble, and if enough time passes, it seems like Dark Bramble would probably succumb to the corruption and die. Now I know everyone would love to see a dying Dark Bramble, but sadly, they just didn't add the corruption to the main game. Like I said though, it's not like leaving that in would have changed the story drastically, but it sure would have been helpful to know that Dark Bramble would perish regardless of whether or not the sun blows up. The last thing we were going to look at seemed pretty strange to me at first. In the Alpha, the Nomai statue in the observatory is quantum. Only parts of it show up when we look at it, and we can never see it all at once. Now why does that matter? Well, that leads me to believe it had something to do with their third eye. I'd bet when the Nomai actually looked at this statue, they'd see the whole thing, but only an Alpha Nomai. I mean, who in the heck would make a statue where you could only see a mouth or a couple of ears when you look at it? That makes little sense and would be super weird. The whole point of a statue is to represent somebody. But it would make total sense if the Alphas know my third eye could actually see the entire statue at once, all of the quantum possibilities. Now we know that isn't true in the full game. They are surprised when they first observe quantum behavior, so it's impossible that they were able to see it all or they wouldn't have been able to notice it in the first place, it would have just been normal. But we do kind of know that the Nomai's third eye is a little special. In the full game, a Nomai on the sun station said, When we fired the sun station, the sun barely responded, even to our third eye. This does suggest the Nomai's third eye is unique in some way, that maybe it can see things their normal eyes can't. But at least in the full game, it doesn't make sense for that specialness to be quantum. Well, that's about all the interesting story detail differences I could find in the alpha versus the full game. Though I may have missed some, these are the ones that really stuck out to me. It's sort of sad, but I do know why the developers decided not to add this stuff to the final version of the game. Aside from just changing the story up, the developers only wanted to add information to the game that's super important to the Know My Story or directly helps you solve a puzzle. That way, people don't get frustrated after they explore for 22 minutes only to find out that Dark Bramble may die of corruption long after it will be killed by the sun in like 30 seconds. I can see why that would make people mad, and I understand why the developers would want to avoid that. But obviously, I really enjoy this kind of stuff, and wish they left it in, and kind of wish they added more trivial information. I bet they have a ton of it written out, they just didn't add it to the final release. And I hope we get to see it someday in a book or a sequel or something like that. I think that'd be awesome and super interesting, and I think a bunch of fans would probably enjoy it too. But, that's about all I have for this video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel here. If you want to go above and beyond, you can sign up to be a member here on the channel. We are one member away from hitting a 15 member milestone YouTube setup. You can help us reach that by clicking the join button below. This really does help the channel grow, and unlocks channel perks such as special roles in the Discord, as well as a special thank you from me in every video as you see above. I really do appreciate each and every one of you for being awesome and supporting me, so thank you very much. But as always, this is the Lore Explorer, just happy you joined me for the video to begin with. And thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.